Hey guys, welcome to Sketch Today. I'm Spencer. I know this video is a little bit late, but things have been a little crazy if you haven't been watching the news. So I am working from home as I always do, but I have my kids. So my apologies for the late video and fair warning, occasionally you may hear some little chatter or noises in the background of the video. If this is your first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button turn on alerts and come say hi to me on the socials. I'm at sketchaday.com on Instagram. I hang out there a lot. Or you can visit my website, sketchaday.com slash newsletter, where you'll be able to sign up for my newsletter and receive this free super sketch tip guide, which is a collection of knowledge that I've amassed over the years. So today I'm gonna do something fun and special shout out and thanks to Chad Sanborn for essentially funding this video because I got some goodies in the mail. I got some new markers. Let's see what's in here. All right. So we got a bunch of juicy, delicious chart pack markers that we're gonna be playing with here. But, for the video today, I wanted to do something fun and maybe a little bit different, but also similar. I'm gonna sketch on paper and I'm gonna render it two ways or color it two ways using my new Procreate brushes that'll be released soon. And I'm gonna use these fresh markers that Chad was so awesome to help me acquire. So I will post the materials I use below in the video. As always, you can follow along and help support the channel by using those links if you choose to buy materials that way. So with that, let's get started. All right, let's bust out these puppies. I did sneak in two Copic markers that I needed, so I'll get those out of the way in that order. But again, special shout out and thanks to Chad. So I've got a bunch of greens here. I've got some reds and grays. We've got some colors to play with. I will be doing a separate video about blending these markers. This is literally me just opening this pack of markers. So thanks for bearing with me here. And I've got some reds to work with and I think that's what I'm gonna be using today. Maybe the greens, but I will be doing a separate video on the blending of these markers. Now I did kind of have to buy these blind. So hopefully the colors work and hopefully all my blends work really well together, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna do just a quick and simple SUV type sketch. And much like drawing a face or human head, I like to start with a unit of measure. And that is my wheel typically. So I'll just sketch an ellipse, something like this. And as I sketch the ellipse, I'm imagining there's an axle on that wheel that's going through the sketch. Now I'll probably do this sketch two times just to make sure that proportionally everything's all right. But again, just trying to make sure that I keep my strokes nice and light. Okay, carry those lines through as we go. I'm trying to pay attention to a little bit of proportion and again, being light with my strokes as I go, as I wanna be able to tweak or change things if necessary. Okay. So a couple little body lines here and on the back, keeping, keeping the back kind of SUV like here. I am, I can already tell, I'm definitely gonna do this one more time to hammer out these details, but nothing wrong with doing an underlay first as you're sketching out a concept to make sure that you have the right design intent moving forward. Okay, so a little headlight action here, maybe some sort of grill that interacts with all that. Again, just keeping it nice and sketchy, nice and loose for you guys here today on Sketch-A-Day. And this is all from scratch. Like I said, not, not prepared or um, pre-done. I rarely do that on the channel where, you know, I'll, I'll take the time to plan everything out. I kind of like showing you guys that raw uh, expression, if you will, and process. So that's my, that's my thoughts on 
why I do it this way. But in terms of sketching the actual vehicle out, you know, I had that axle. You can imagine there's another axle going through here. Um, somewhere here, there's the wheelbase and halfway through the vehicle right about there. So I am using marker paper and I'm gonna fold or cut the end off either way. I'm just gonna fold it. <clears throat> this way I can place the sketch wherever I want under my main sheet here. And I'm gonna angle it ever so slightly and also make some tweaks to the front end. So as I'm sketching this, I kinda want the front end to poke out a bit, okay. Poke okay, out, come back, still have some of this grill quality here. We can tweak or change lights, things like that, right? So it's about redrawing and not tracing what I did before. At least that's the way I think of it when I get to this phase of my sketching. And this way I can make sure that the energy and that rawness of the initial sketch is carried through to this final sketch, okay? So that's the idea behind, oops, had a little shift there. Always helpful to tape things down if you can. I kinda like to just freestyle it, but um, that way you make sure the energy is you know, carried through to your final sketch and you're able to essentially just have a nice, fresh, lively presentation of your concept. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure out a couple stylistic things here, you know, particularly how this front end terminates and some of these lines, trying not to, trying not to get too busy with it, but also making sure I incorporate some functional bits, like if there's you know, some sort of cooling that needs to happen through this front grill, for example. And our body line, we can carry some of these things through, like so. Over the wheel wells. Keep it nice and fresh and clean, like I said before. So quick underlay, quick overlay. Get our wheel in, like so. Some quick rims. I kind of have a standard rim I use, I think, um, but that's okay. I think, uh, you know, if you're doing this digitally or full rendering, it's pretty, pretty easy rather to just get a picture of a rim and throw that in. But for sketch purposes, I like to keep it kind of simple as I go. All right, so there's that back wheel and we have our front wheel here. Let's have a little tread indication, maybe just on the side here. Just a little line with a jog to indicate some tread. Finish out that wheel, maybe show some undercarriage components, skid plate, and so on, and cheat a little bit. I'm going to show this outside wheel <clears throat> like so. And now we get to our greenhouse on the top. And I'm just going to rake the glass a bit more than I had in my under sketch. Bring that back and finish out. Now I'm not going to part out the doors and all of that. We're just going to keep this as a nice loose SUV concept sketch. But again, hopefully you can kind of see the process here. I didn't have the interior figured out, but I, I basically like to kind of silhouette things out, maybe show a little bit of the back glass. Um, if there's a little roof rack element, we can carry that on. Um, but I like to kind of silhouette things out and not focus on the details on the inside of the vehicle. With sketching, you kind of have to pick your battles a little bit. And I think sometimes we just bog things down unnecessarily as we're drawing. So try to pick your battles. Think about um, you know what it is you're trying to show and where that detail needs to go in your sketch and it'll help, um, it'll help guide things for you. All right, so 
I just want to angle the front of this SUV a bit and maybe finish out some of these details. One of the advantages again of working digitally is I can always undo, erase, all that good stuff. But here, as we are working in a traditional media, you kind of have to plan to just work with your mistakes and make it work, make it count. So that's what I'm trying to do here on the front of this SUV. I could probably do another sketch and refine it, but we're gonna just move ahead with what we have here. All right, so now that I have this in pen, I'm gonna pop open my iPad. We're gonna take a picture of this and that way I can, so there's my underlay and overlay. You guys can see there's the initial sketch right here and I have my overlay sketch. Now I am going to take a picture with my iPad like I mentioned and that way I can um, just make sure that I have a nice clean sketch to work with as I bring it into my digital program. I will be using Procreate today so that is what I will be sketching in for this particular SUV sketch. But like I said, we'll also use our awesome chart, chart pack markers, uh, gracefully, graciously provided by Chad Sanborn. So shout out to Chad once again. All right. So now that I'm in this good place, I'm just gonna grab my iPad and take a picture. So I've got this canvas right here and in Procreate, if I just hit my wrench and add, I'm going to insert a, or I'm gonna take a photo actually. So hit take a photo. I have the smart case on my iPad, so I have to flip this back to take the photo. But now you can kind of see where I'm at. Let's make sure this is in view for you guys. But you can see that now I can take a picture of the sketch. So just lifting my iPad up a little bit here, positioning things where I want them to be. I can now take a quick picture. I'm gonna have to adjust this a little bit and reduce the distortion. The reason I took it as an, at an angle, rather, is to avoid the glare on the screen and a bit of shadowing. So let's see if we can do this here. Take a picture again. I'm gonna hit use photo. Now you'll see that there's a shadow there. I'm gonna scale up and tap the magic wand on my iPad. And now I can adjust the hue, saturation, and brightness. I'm gonna crank the brightness up like so. Crank the saturation down like so. And under curves, I can also drag my curves up and down, kind of in this S pattern until I have, you know, basically just just the black lines, okay? I'm gonna try and get rid of that shadow. So that's what I was trying to avoid a little bit there. So maybe what I can do is get to a point where the rest of the drawing looks pretty clean. Hit okay. And now select the rest of this where it looks pretty dark and then go back to adjusting my curves. And oops, let me make that selection again. So I'm going to make this selection. If I swipe down with my three fingers, I have these options to cut and paste. So I'm going to cut and paste on a new layer and then go to my curves and adjust this up. So it's brighter on this side now. Okay. And I have more, uh, more of a clean sketch in the front. All right. So that's why I wanted to avoid the shadow in the photo but we've gotten to a place where I think, I think we're doing all right. And now I have that sketch loaded into my iPad. You guys can see it there. So on my iPad Pro here, I'm going to use my markers that I have and I'll use the reds just so that we're kind of staying in the same color family. But to kick things off, um, I'm gonna actually use an airbrush. So just a nice soft airbrush in the middle and we'll do something similar with our marker sketch. So 
switch this layer to multiply. Let's see, multiply right there. And now I can take this nice large airbrush and I'm gonna try and keep this pretty sketchy guys. So nice airbrush just for base color, okay? In the middle, just like that. And now I can take my markers. So I have these really cool marker brushes I'm working on for Procreate, but I can take these markers with the right size and essentially just start to render this out. And these markers are great because they do blend pretty well. And I wanna do this with these markers because I wanna show you how they work, why I like them, why I created them, and hopefully get you guys excited a bit about using them. So, like I said, they do blend pretty well. Um, they follow the stroke, thanks to Dirk for the, the awesome, awesome tip, which helped me fix, <laughs> fix that a bit in my marker settings. But I can just change the size, go around, and you can see just using the base airbrush here and painting or rather markering over things i'm able to now sculpt the car and like i said these blend pretty well if you're careful and i even have a marker that's more of a blending marker that'll give me a little bit better blend so i'll use that one here on parts of this sketch but hopefully you guys can see how this is working out where i can you know, think about the light on the car, right? And essentially, essentially just give it form by working with it. All right, so the hood, a couple strokes over the hood here where we might be seeing some sort of reflection. I'm gonna drop the size of this marker and do a couple you know, reflection lines here. If you're wondering what this is, just go look at go look at your vehicle or a vehicle outside. You'll see what I'm talking about. And these are just things in the environment that happen to be reflecting in the side of this SUV. Just like so. All right. And we can even do a couple light lines as well in the mix. And this is this is certainly one thing you can't do with marker. You can't really, I mean, unless you have a paint marker, you don't really have a white marker at your disposal usually. So um, certainly one thing I can use a tool here at my disposal because I am working digitally. All right, a little bit of white there just to pop on those highlights. We can gotta make sure I'm working on the right layers here as well. I typically like to work as non-destructively as possible as I'm doing this, which means, you know, avoiding doing things that I can't undo basically. So that's kind of what, what I try to do as I'm doing things like automotive renderings um, and so forth. All right. So let's mix it up. I'm gonna to go to a new layer and just start to tone some of this a bit. So we might have a little bit of a dark in the middle here. Again, I'm still using this marker and I wanna keep it as realistic as possible. That's why I'm using the marker and trying to use it in a way that I would in real life. So you guys get a sense and we can compare together how these uh, techniques work and contrast each other because they're not exactly the same as you will see in the second part of this video but rather they are related and I am trying to use the same principles and approach as I would any other time so all right so right here I'm trying to position in a way my contrasting bits next to each other so that they communicate three dimensionality. Blending with the marker as well. Just a couple of light strokes. It is pressure sensitive. So if I go a little heavier, it's gonna put down more marker, for example. Let's 
pick a lighter marker color. Again, something that would be hard to do with regular markers, I can easily do with these digital markers. So you don't have to immediately work light until you get it right, for example. And we can erase or enhance contrast where we need it to be enhanced. So pretty handy, I'd say. All right, so we'll just keep working this. I'm trying to, from the middle of the vehicle, working back, I'm trying to create some contrast between the portion of the vehicle that's angled toward the light and away from the light. So in case you're wondering, why is, why is the side of the vehicle on the right so light? It's because I'm trying to keep it light because that's that's where my light source is, okay? So that's that's the idea behind working the way I am right now. All right, so we're almost to a point where I think we can start to you know, focus on some other things in this sketch. Um, at this point, I like to, let's see, let's erase, I think I made a boo-boo here, but um, at this point I like to put in the wheels and that kind of thing, um, figure all that out. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll add a little bit more of these reflection lines um, as we go through the sketch as well. You know, things like this might be reflecting in the top of the vehicle. So my advice always, if you're trying to draw something realistic, definitely take a look outside and see what you observe and then see if you can mimic or replicate that. Okay, so jumping to some gray for the wheels. Could use gray, could use blue, could you know, mix things up, but I'm just gonna keep it chill and simple for this sketch. And back to my real marker here. Let's just do a quick fill. I like this marker because it does have a bit of texture to it. So as I zoom in, you can see that there is some texture uh, to this marker, much like you would have on real paper. Okay, so let's fill in the front wheel as well, keeping it nice and sketchy. Tapering out if we have to, can kind of fade. All right, just like that. And get some of these components on the underside of the vehicle. And perhaps block out some material changes on the front. All right, so just like I would with a real marker, just blocking that in like so. And like a real marker, I can build up the value as I'm painting. All right, so multiple strokes means it gets a little bit darker as you go. So for example, right there or on this rim, as I wanna quickly shade that in. And again, I can use white, which you can't really use with a real marker unless you get something like a paint marker. It's really hard to, to get something like that to happen. Okay, a little bit of white on these treads, same, same marker. I am using the digital marker that I created. Let's get these wheel wells under here, a little bit of shade, shadow. All right, and I'm actually gonna go above this layer four to do some of the shadowing. And this way I get an interesting and perhaps more accurate way to light this car in that I'm now applying this darker pigment over the red. So in some of these areas where I do need that good contrast, right? I can shade in right there, move up, part lines, so forth, and get that filled in quickly with this, this marker brush. And unlike a real marker, I can change the size of the tip. So that's also super handy and helpful as you're working. All right, now let's get this grill in, just a nice light gray, and I'm gonna shade over. I like that it's picking up a little bit of the red as I go, and on this side, maybe go a little lighter. 
so forth, picking up that red. Now a little lighter, and I can create some highlights on these grills, just like that. And we'll add some shadowing as well, but once again, just keeping it sketchy, keeping it loose and fast. All right, so just a little bit more here. Got to get the interior of the vehicle, a couple other effects, but just a quick, quick sketch using these digital tools. All right, trying not to overthink and spend too much time on this. All right, so there's the body of the vehicle. A couple more contrasting, contrasty bits here, like in the wheel wells. All right, keep it sketchy, keep it loose. Maybe not sloppy, but certainly treating it like I would a paper sketch. Okay, trying not to undo too much either. So a couple little hits of contrast here for reflection, maybe a little bit for texture. Could have some text on the wheels, that kind of thing. Um, let's throw that in. Maybe some indication of some lugs here and there. And with a little bit larger brush, some shadowing on the inside of this wheel, like so. And we can put some nice highlights on these rims so that they feel like, oh, this is actually a three-dimensional thing. Okay, so little hits, keeping it, keeping it loose. Like I said, keeping it light. I'm just playing here to see if I need to apply some highlight, and I think I will as I go. All right, back wheel, not as much detail. And then for the greenhouse on the vehicle, I'm gonna use just a gray marker to fill in here for the A and C pillars, gaskets, roof, all of that good stuff, okay? So probably something like that, maybe the dash. Just like so, Keep it, again, keeping it nice and loose, sketchy. Blend where you need to, and so forth, okay? Blend that down. Just like that. Okay, so on the inside, I am gonna make it just a little darker. It's a little too light, I think, distracting. So a little bit darker, but still keeping it sketchy, keeping it loose. All right, a little bit more on these wheels. Okay, and a shadow would be nice to just kind of finish off the sketch, so I'm gonna prepare for having the shadow in the sketch and have a nice big marker. Now I can just shade shade this in like I would a regular sketch. Okay, I don't mind the overlap because I do want it to feel like I did it on paper, even though I didn't. I do want to see if I can convey that feeling of just raw expression and sketchiness. So I like having the strokes right there as well. And you can shade and blend that in, okay? So just like that. And actually I don't really like the shadow now. <laughs> so let's turn this back on and I'm gonna erase bits of the shadow I'm not really feeling it after all. But we might end up with a cool look. So again, we'll just keep it sketchy. Keep it loose. Maybe something like that. And then maybe the shadow is actually on the other side. I like this better. So something like that. Nice and loose. Okay, now let's do the headlight. I'm not even sure what layer this is on, but it's okay. Again, because I am trying to keep this nice and fresh and loose like I would a real sketch. 
All right, so I'm just using like a light whitish blue for that one. And then for our signal, just a nice orange here for our turn signal. And maybe I'm doing this the wrong way and it should be on the outside, but um, I'll leave it here for now. Maybe just something like that. And let's go ahead and deepen Deepen some of this, some of the red on this body side. Again, contrast is your friend, so don't be afraid of contrast, um, particularly as it pertains to surface definition, because it can really, really help things just read so much better if you have the right amounts of contrast in your sketch. So don't be afraid to play with it make some mistakes, see what works, come back. In this case, I'm just blending black back, yeah, blending back and forth with these colors a bit until I have something I like. And now I can hit this edge, just a little, just a little white, maybe a smaller version of the marker brush, low pressure like so. And maybe get a couple more of these areas as well that would be receiving additional light or highlight. Okay. So nice and loose. Something like that. Perhaps a little reflection on the glass. And we're in a pretty good spot. Okay. So that is the digital version of the drawing. And so now I'm gonna to switch to paper and we can show, or I can show rather, how I would do the same thing using my chart pack markers. So here I've got the original sketch on paper. And like I said, I haven't used these markers before, so I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of a test here. So this is my cadmium red and I've got, what is this? This is a crimson crimson red so this is cadmium crimson and this is mostly for me but you guys will be able to see the colors as well this one is a ruby ruby red and we've got what's called a life red here all right so a life red All right, and these markers are super, super juicy. I've also got some cool grays here um, that I'll be using. I'm gonna use cool gray one, two, and three for purposes of this video, not anymore. But I'm actually gonna start, whoa, that was a juicy marker, it like went everywhere. Um, I'm gonna start with my cool gray one actually, and I'm gonna use this for the wheels. Now with chart packs, it's interesting. This is called a cool gray, but it certainly looks warm to me right now. Um, so your mileage may vary and your experience may be different, but similar idea to my digital sketch, flood things that I know are going to be gray, for example, with the gray marker. So this grill area I know is going to be gray. And I'm just referencing the digital sketch to my... And I'm just referencing the digital sketch to my left, so pardon if um, there's an awkward pause or anything. On the inside, I'm gonna fill this in as well with gray. So it's gonna be a little bit different than the sketch I did on the iPad, but similar idea. Now, because I don't have an, it's, it's not the same as far as the markers go, meaning I can't use a white marker. I have to be very careful and work light until I get it right. So looking at these reds, the cadmium red seems to be the lightest here. So I'm gonna use this one to start. And as far as blending goes, you know, one of the things I like to do with the markers is just lift the marker toward the end of the stroke. And it kind of helps me create a fade in effect. Okay, much like I do with my digital marker. 
So again, I don't have a white. I do have white pencils, so I can use that. But trying to be somewhat purposeful, judicious, and responsible with how I apply these colors because it's really hard to fix if you're not um, thinking through where you're putting those colors exactly. So if you are using a marker, you'll want to be a real marker rather. Like these chart packs, you'll want to be mindful. Now the chart packs, they do come with one tip and that tip is able to do multiple line weights. I'll show that in a, few, in a future video. But for now, We'll just keep trucking along here with my lightest marker to begin with. All right, so you can kind of see what I'm trying to do here as well, just as I'm applying the marker, fanning together, okay? So that I have, so I have some sort of blend to work with on this sketch. All right, so now the hood just across here and apply some of this red, finish out the rest of the SUV body, like so. And I think I have some dark, cool gray markers. So I'll use these for the roof, much like we did digitally for the greenhouse and some of the interior stuff as well, like maybe the stash, kind of fill this in. Leave some areas white if they are closer to the light source. Here I've got my wheel well, so I can shade this in nice and dark with this cool gray seven. All right, same with the wheel here and everything underneath. Keeping it sketchy. Just keep it loose and feeling, feeling good. All right. So almost to a place where I'm done with the wheels. I do feel like I can move a little bit faster with traditional markers. And I'm not sure if that's just due to the nature of the tool or my experience with the tool, but I do and I have thought at some times that digital tools put you in a certain mindset. So it's a little bit harder to um, just be as free flowing in thought as opposed to something like just working with the markers because I, I know the limitations of the tool and so on. All right, so now I'm gonna jump to this crimson red and just kind of hit some of these areas. It's not dark enough. So let's jump to the ruby. See if we can push our, our shading blending here. On our car, I am using marker paper, so I shouldn't have any bleed out, and I don't, because I'm using really good marker paper. But again, the idea here being working light until you get it right, and as far as contrast goes, putting your lightest lights against your darkest darks is gonna help your object, in this case a car, read three-dimensionally. So something you'll wanna try to pay attention to and see if you can apply it in a way that that will help your services read. All right, so just keep building that up and then we'll jump to our final red. Okay, nice blends as we go. Of those reflection lines like I was talking about. Just go outside, look at your car, pay attention, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about, okay? If you have a vehicle. If you don't, just go look at someone else's. Easy peasy. All right, so back to these grays. Um, let's jump to my cool gray two. And just from this center line, I'm gonna shade across create some blends here so that now we have some three dimensionality. Okay, you can see that in this example, we have a light gray and a darker gray next to each other. So these will start to read and feel 
three-dimensional and the rims doing the same thing I did digitally here just with a little bit of shadow and I'm gonna jump to my cool gray five finish out blending on this wheel okay on the bottom here as well so remember contrast is your friend don't be afraid to use it it's gonna really help your sketches pop right so the future video I'm gonna do on this I will be talking about different papers and how they seem to work with these chart pack markers you know, a few of you have been curious so I'll be happy to go over it and talk about blending and bleeding and all the, the good stuff that comes with using these markers. So you'll want to watch out for that. Definitely hit subscribe and turn on those alerts so you don't miss when I go live with that video. All right, just on the inside of the rim, just like I did digitally, we're going to add some shadow. Always work light until you get it right. So here I have my 30% gray and creating some blends on this wheel as well as we go, just like so. Um, I'm gonna jump to my cool gray five just to finish out the blend on this wheel on the front here. Scrub that, looks like I'm gonna have to jump to the seven after all. And hopefully once this all dries, we'll have a nice smooth blend from light to dark on this wheel well section. We can use pencil to help us out, but just trying to focus on all marker and pen here. All right, so there's the body of the vehicle. And now, like I said, with the white pencil, I can use that to kind of help where necessary, punch those highlights or add reflection lines, things like that, that need to be part of the sketch to help it just read that much better. So all things you can do, you know, shade over the marker if you want. Um, just as a word of caution, the marker you'll wanna be, you wanna have that be your uh, second to last layer, meaning if you're gonna apply pencil, make sure you're not gonna apply marker over it because the solvents in the marker are gonna do funny things with your pencil and you won't be you won't be happy so make sure that's something you do and again we can use a pencil to enhance our shading or you know, enhance the contrast of the marker if you don't have a dark one you can always shade a little bit of pencil over the color and it'll help things feel that much better all right guys i know this is a long video so if you've made it this far, thank you so much for hanging with me. Um, hopefully you've been able to see the differences between the two media and some of the similarities. The marker that I created is not perfect. However, I do feel it, it gives a decent approximation of the real tool, the real thing. So if you are working while you're out and about, um, you're not gonna miss your markers too much. Now I did neglect to do my high, my headlights here. And I'm not sure if I have a light enough blue. Let's test out this blue. It's a little bit too dark, but I do have this Copic blue marker that I got. It's a blue green 32. So I'm gonna use that to shade in my light here. So not entirely chart pack marker, but close enough. And for the orange, Let's go ahead and use just standard Copic marker because again, I don't have an orange marker in my chart packs that I purchased that I could or would use. All right, so that is the overall sketch. Just to kind of give this a background, I'm gonna use this fatty pilot marker here and just kind of fill in a little bit, not the whole thing. Man, the fumes on this thing are insane. So just fill in a bit, keep it styled, keep it loose, right? And let's go across the page, do something different here. 
across the page like this and then let's go through and just shade it in. So a lot of these things just come from being willing to try new stuff as you draw and see how it works out. Um, if you approach things from a place of pure fear, and I, I know it's scary because you may have spent a long time when you're drawing and you want to make sure you don't mess it up too much. Um, I get that. It makes sense. It's reasonable. But at the same time, don't be afraid, don't be afraid to try new things, okay? Um, experiment shade over your markers, use pastels, paint, whatever you've got, and see how it turns out. And if you find something that's cool and you wanna share it, definitely share it with me. I'm, I'm open to trying new things myself. So just a little paint marker here. Let's uh, get some of these highlights, maybe pump some of these super white areas, clean things up where we need to. Again, this, this is one of those tools that I think with a little bit of practice, you kind of get the hang of it and you know the limitations and how the effect's gonna show up. So then it becomes a lot easier to apply this tool on your sketches. And it's convenient because it is just a pen. Um, so I can just whip it out whenever I need to and apply the ink to my sketch. It works pretty great. So this is a pit artist brush pen that you can use to create highlights for your sketches. All right, just on the rims here, a couple highlights. You probably should use real gouache so it pops a little bit better. You can even use it for wheel texture, things like that. But keep popping on highlight. We also had some lug nuts on our digital sketch. I'm going to throw those in here, just like so. Just like that, guys. Nice and easy, nice and chill. Think through your sketches and things will, things will definitely come together in a way that helps you create something super presentable and something that I think you'd be proud of okay and that's that's the important thing is being happy with what you create and recognizing um, that it is a sketch so here's our digital version right here i'm going to angle it ever so slightly so you can see and here is our real marker version personally i prefer the drawing on paper i always do but if i were in a pinch and i needed to create something that looked like marker on my ipad i feel like i could do that using my brushes and there's the real thing there's the digital okay so hopefully you guys get a sense for that well thanks for joining me on sketch a day today i know this was a long video so if you've made it this far kudos to you you're an all-star you are a true super fan if you didn't make it this far go back and watch the rest of the video but in all seriousness thank you so much come find me on the socials i'm at sketchaday.com definitely hit subscribe turn on alerts i'll be going live quite a bit more especially as we're all hunkered down here and be sure to visit sketchyday.com slash newsletter and sign up for that newsletter because some goodies are coming real soon also you'll want to set a reminder for fridays at 9 a.m pacific because i go live from this studio to the whole universe world and we'll draw and sketch and do things together. And if you have any suggestions, be sure to hit me with those either during the stream, but preferably before the stream so that I can be ready to answer your questions. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time right here on Sketch Day.